Sydney, Minston. Victoria, a lot of sunshine for Northern Queensland. Check. For New Zealand, the BBC a fine app. spell of weather on Sunday, but it will turn more unsettled next week. Back into that source. This is the extraordinary story climate change. The vaccines Europe, on BBC World News. I'm Michelle Fleury in New York, and this is BBC World News America. Zeroing in on security issues in all their forms, from TikTok and data privacy to the Ukraine war and global diplomacy, we hear from the head of the House Intel Committee on the risks all around us. US President Joe Biden heads north to meet with Canada's leader. The pair reached a deal on migration and talk trade, the Ukraine war and hockey. And week of anger in France over the president's plans to raise the retirement age. Britain's king has cancelled his planned visit. Welcome to World News America in the UK, on PBS and around the globe. We begin the program with a bird's eye view of security issues, both here in the US and around the world. And it's been a busy week. The presidents of Russia and China put up a united front against the West. Questions swirled over the origins of COVID. The Pentagon says the US took proportionate action when carrying out airstrikes on Thursday against Iran-backed forces in Syria. That's after a US contractor was killed when a drone hit a coalition base in Syria's northeast. And of course, we had Thursday's marathon session in Congress, where the head of TikTok faced a grilling over whether Chinese authorities have access to Americans' data. Our chief presenter, Sumi Somaskanda, just spoke to the head of the U.S. House Intelligence Committee. She joins me now from Washington. Sumi, please tell us, what did he have to say? Well, Michelle, it's been an intense week here in Washington, especially for Chairman Turner. You know, Democrats and Republicans are at odds over the Biden administration's China and Ukraine policies, which were on display early this week during the Putin-Xi meeting. But yesterday, they joined together to challenge TikTok CEO about Americans' privacy and national security concerns over this app in a bipartisan way. So I asked him about all of this and if a ban on TikTok is actually on the horizon. We'll have to leave it there. Chairman Mike Turner, thanks so much for joining us. Great, thank you. Really wants to bring bipartisanship to the committee, but I found most interesting his response to the origins of the COVID pandemic. So we may soon be learning more when these reports are declassified. And as we heard there, Chairman Turner says the version of the story that we have on record does not match what we're going to find out, Michelle. Fascinating stuff, Sumi. I know you'll stay across that. Well, from security to diplomacy. And US President Joe Biden opened his remarks to Canada's parliament today with a bonjour Canada before getting down to business. He spoke of the long-standing partnership between the two nations and the need to work together on issues like climate change and trade. The two leaders have also agreed a deal to stop asylum seekers moving across their shared border via unofficial crossings. The move is part of efforts to limit an influx of migrants at Roxham Road, an unofficial crossing between New York State and the province of Quebec. Canada has also agreed to create a new refugee programme for migrants fleeing violence in Central and South America. Now to the debate over when is the right time to retire. In America, the retirement age is 66 or 67, depending on when you were born. That's significantly higher than in France, where the government's move to raise the retirement age from 62 to 64 has resulted in protests. Whilst calls for a nationwide strike next week have forced King Charles to call off his planned state visit. 
More than one million people took to the streets on Thursday to protest against the pension reforms. The Interior Ministry says more than 450 protesters were arrested and 440 members of the security forces injured. Our Paris correspondent Hugh Schofield told me more. In other news, sharp declines in banking shares in Europe have renewed concerns that the panic triggered by the collapse of two U.S. banks and rushed takeover of Swiss giant Credit Suisse may not be easily contained. Shares in Germany's Deutsche Bank fell by 14% at one point on Friday, with other lenders also seeing big losses. London's FTSE 100 ended the day down 1.3%, while stock markets in Germany and France dropped even more sharply. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has been meeting with British leaders to discuss shared security interests, the threat from Iran. His visit comes after tens of thousands of Israeli protested on Thursday over plans to overhaul the country's judicial system. Critics say the proposed measures are tied to protecting Netanyahu from potential prosecution for corruption charges. Now to India, where opposition leader Rahul Gandhi has been disqualified from parliament following his conviction for defamation on Thursday. Mr Gandhi, who is a key Congress party figure, was given a two-year prison sentence for remarks about the Prime Minister's surname Modi in a campaign speech in 2019. Mr Gandhi was an MP in the southern state of Kerala. He remains on bail for 30 days and has said he will appeal the verdict. Well, from Mumbai, the BBC's South Asia correspondent Yogata Limai reports. Yogata Limai there for us. Now, the former hotel manager portrayed in the Hollywood film Hotel Rwanda will be freed from prison. Paul Rusesa Begina has been sentenced to 25 years for terrorism charges in 2021. His supporters called it a sham trial. The 68-year-old is credited with saving some 1,200 people during the 1994 Rwandan genocide. He later became a fierce critic of the country's current president. Our Africa correspondent Catherine Bierrohanga has more. Philip Petty is the original man on wire, a legendary tightrope walker who has been the focus of award-winning films and who has captured the global imagination with his aerial performances. His most recent exploits found the 73-year-old in Washington, D.C., putting on a high-wire performance at the National Building Museum. That's where the BBC caught up with him. Proving age is just a number. From all of us here, goodbye. BBC News. Well, you are watching BBC News with me, Samantha Simmons. We're taking you straight back to Utah, where Gwyneth Paltrow has taken the stand and is giving evidence in the lawsuit, which is seeing her being sued by Terry Sanderson, a man who claims he suffered injuries after being hit by her while skiing. She is counter suing. Let's just show you the scene live in that court in Utah. There's a bit of a uh, legal powwow going on. Gwyneth Paltrow has been taking the stand um, for the past half an hour or so with a little bit of a break, uh, but there is now some legal discussion going on.